Hello everyone. Uh, today uh, I'm going to look at how do we make a behavioral model using VHDL, uh, how to create a test bench, and then later on how to burn our uh, bit generated program to our FPGA. In this case, I'm using Basis 2 FPGA, which looks like this. This is what I'm going to use. Has all these switches, uh, these push buttons. Uh, we have the seven segment displays, plus we have the LEDs as shown here LED 0, 1, 2. And these are the designators which we can use to address uh, particular switches and stuff. Uh, this is an on off button, and this is a VGA port. We uh, and these are uh, some other um, outward connectors, input and output connectors. Anyway, so quickly, just l let's quickly look at the, the program. Uh, I'm going to open a new project and I'm calling it uh, main three and. It's a three input and. This is the name of the project and I'm calling it, uh, choosing HDL. And this is a specification of the board, a basis to board if you would like to burn it in the end into the into that board you have to use the specification go to next say finish perfect now you go to this uh, chipset here on on your project and then click this button and go and say, let's say that i would like to create a vht module which is again uh, it's a uh, 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 main three input and so that's the name of the uh, of the of my uh, file and i'll be having input a input b input c and the output y and i'm going to say it, it's output so i've selected from here it's a good idea to select the things from here and keep the architecture name as a behavioral as a as a standard name otherwise you can always change the architecture name so that's how we finish the project and these files open so let's quickly remove these comments uh okay the structure is such that we have a uh, we have a library with IEEE a standard logic library which can be which is used to declare standard logic uh, data types in the entity uh, within the program uh, and uh, that's why we have to use this library. So we have an entity. This is how the structure works. We we declare the libraries, then we have an entity, and then we have an architecture. So from entity, you can think of it as an as a as a black box having some ports. Some of them are input and others are output. So that's what we have, uh, the entity. So in an entity, we don't know what's inside that black box, how these input and output map into each other, how does our output behave based on the data on inputs. We just declare an entity, a boundary of a circuit without internal knowledge. And once that's done, we just end the uh, entity. Entity's name is main3 and ant. And we end the entity and then starts the architecture. Here's the architecture. Uh, uh, architecture we, we named the default, which is behavioral of main three input and, which is this uh, system, is. And then we begin. And for three input and gate, it is very simple. I will say y assigned to y. This is an insertion operator which says that y will be equivalent to what? A and B and C. Since it is an AND gate, so that's that's all. Uh, that's all we need. This is called uh, an AND gate behavioral input uh, for in a VHDL. Then we say Control S and we save the software, the the program, and then we go to synthesizer and we check syntax. Okay, perfect. Uh, you you can always just uh, run the synthesizer. Say run, and it will synthesize all of these uh, these things. And we will be able to view the RTL schematic of the system. Just double click that, just choose this option, say OK. You see this, this is, and then double click this one. And you see this is how the system is telling you that this is the model uh, with current, uh, uh, current syntax. I can infer that you are looking at a three input ABC input model with a Y output and it's behaving as an AND gate. Just close that. That was, that was just for to tell you guys that how the system works it out. Once this is done, the second thing is to add the test bench into it. Adding a test bench means that 
we have this system. We have created a system. It, the, system uh, the RTL schematic is telling us that it is a three input AND gate. But is it really functioning like an input, uh, three input AND gate or not? To do that, we need to test the system. And in the test bench, it's a test bench as the name says, we generate inputs, uh, a random data input according to our own need. So we say that let my uh, A data and B data and C data be uh, one for a certain time and zero for the other times. And then we try to look at the output that how does our output is uh, reacting to our inputs. That's what uh, the test bench is. To, to add the test bench, again, click, the, click here, then click this one and go, um, where is the test bench? Here, VHDL test bench. And the conventional, the way of naming it is main underscore three input underscore and and let's add TB as from the test bench into it and then say yes associate with the three in and then finish and I will open our test bench this is the test bench all again you can uncomment all of this by hitting all shift plus C and they will uncomment all of these values to add the comment to a whole number of files just select them and say all plus C and they will be commented out like this okay this is a quick shortcut so I'll just delete all of them. All right now here, uh, the, the the test bench goes like entity is main three and and test bench is and then we end the entity and the architectural behavior is this. We declare the system which we are going to test, which is a three input and gate as a component. And then the component should have the same port names exactly as we have defined them in the main VHDL program, which is here, A, B, C, Y, in, in, out in the standard logic. And actually, normally we would just uh, copy paste this in here. We initiate this as a component with the name of the entity, and then we end the component. Once this is done, we look at the, the signals. Now, what, is, what are the signals, A, B, C? signals are the are the input uh, are the wires which are connecting a test bench to a three input and gate to quickly look at this um where is the okay here's a test bench now look at this this is my three input and gate with a b c and y as output and this is my test bench which will randomly generate some input and now we have internal lines which are generating these random inputs and we are calling them A test bench, B of a test bench, C of a test bench, and they all are mapping to these. And then again, Y of the test bench. And the, anything which is internal, whose data is unknown, uh, is called signals. Okay, so that's what we are doing here. We are saying here that the signal actually is auto generated the signal A uh, of having a standard logic, and it is initialized to zero. So the if the initial value is zero. Remember that if we have a single bit data, we initialize them within uh, within a quotes, single quotes. And if the data is in the form of a bus or a vector, such as zero, zero, we'll have to initialize them in inverted commas like that uh, by removing that. That's how we do. But since it is a single bit, so it will be in the single quotes like that, all right? So the signal, a of uh, standard logic of uh, and signal B, C, all these signals, I'm going to call them as A underscore of test bench and then B underscore of test bench and then C underscore test bench and then the out signal Y of the output also as a test bench. Once that is done, we are not looking at the clock period because we will generate our own signal, our own inputs. So anything with the clock can be removed exactly. Uh, you see that clock process identification. I'll just delete that. Now, looking at that, this is called unit under test is main three input and and the port map. So three input uh, and is this one. And now we are going to define the port map. The port map is that A, which is again here, A of this input is connected to A test bench. So A is mapping to underscore TB. Similarly, B with btb test bench y with uh, with the yt bench uh, this is how the the port is mapping just looking at this diagram it will be easy to know 
and then we again we go to the stimulation process and again we don't need a clock here because we'll generate our own clock and now um, just I'll just remove that one so my stimulation process starts so my first stimulation process is I say begin and then I say the wait for 100 nanoseconds once you you've waited for 100 nanoseconds I want my a underscore TB this is the signal which is here which will be generated here I'm saying that let this be equal to not of a underscore TB it means whatever was the value at ATB will be noted will will have will be negated here and we know that ATB was initialized into zero so at this moment it will be zero uh, for the 100 seconds it will be zero and then it will turn into one once this is done I'll say I'll, I'll go and I'll say and the the process so my this process has now uh, ended all right this is done for the for the a uh, input we have to do the same thing for the other inputs so I will just go and copy paste here and then here and the stimulation process number two and the stimulation process number three Okay, and this one is BTB will be will be changed to not, and then CTB sorry C sorry CTB will be CTB, and now I'm saying that my A input was will be no and yes from for 100 nan nanoseconds. Then I would like my B to be yes and no for 50 nanoseconds and C for 25 nanoseconds so why I'm doing that because in that case I'll ensure that there will be moments when a B and C both will be having a data one all right if we are saying so there I mean I'll, I'll the possibility of generating a random data so so as to check the functionality of uh, of a three input and gate will become very much uh, obvious if we give different time cycles to these once this is done I'll hit control and S and then I'll go to go and hit the simulation thing and now once you're there please make sure if you click this plus button do not use this one and then simulate the behavioral model or behavioral check syntax you have to click here this is the main thing do not click here either click here or you can just use that plus button and choose the main main uh, test bench uh, test bench model if you would like to simulate once this is done just check the ch uh, syntax let's see if there's something wrong no it's completely su successfully now hit the simulate behavioral model let's see how the simulation is generated perfect the green lines uh, once you see the green lines it means that it is there the output is here so all you have to do is to fit the data by clicking this tab this button zoom to full view click it and now so just look at the the first data is ATB that's BTB the second line represents CTB third line and the fourth YTB is the output now we know that we it were the our ATB here was zero for 100 nanoseconds and then it got a value of one after 100 nanoseconds so it is zero and then it got one and then zero and one and then the cycle kept on repeating similarly the second one was for 50 nanoseconds you see 50 nanoseconds no yes and then third one was for 25 nanoseconds so now we have the timing diagram and we know that the output y will be only one when all of these three inputs will be one so we we see that i mean uh at this is the moment where all three are one and the output becomes one during all other times you see here this is one but these two are zero here this is one but this re remains zero so we can say that our system is working you can click anywhere and you will be able to see the data changing you see the data values changing here and accordingly our outputs are changing you see i mean when our outputs are changed this is the place where all we get all one more so that's how we do it so once that simulation is done we know our system is behaving now is the time to again go to the implementation and to generate a constraint file uh, add new source add um, implementation constraint file uh, which will generate a bitmap uh, a bit uh, file for our FPGA which will work 
All right, so uh, I'm again, again here going to name it main three input and and I'll call it constraint file. All right, next add to the project. Yes, finish. So here's the constraint file. Now looking at the looking at uh, the basis board, I would like what I would like to do. I would like to use switch zero, which is P11, and switch one L3 and switch two K3 these three as a b c so i'll i'll mark this one a this one b this one c and i'm gonna use any random led as an output uh, let's say p4 p4 this is our, our led for the output all right to do that it's p11 so you go to the to the constraint file here and you start with the net so net means like connect connect what connect my input what are my inputs they're a b c and y so i'll st start with a connect my a uh, and then I will say the location is equal to for the A, the location is equal to P11. I'm calling it P11. So that's my location. Similarly, uh, control V, control V, control. So my location of B and my location of C and my location of Y. So my uh, the net B uh, having a location at L3, L3. Similarly, we have K3, and for LED, it is um, N4, P4, we saw, said, okay, I'll choose P4, all right? Once this is done, you save it, and once it is saved, go to the, to the main file here, and here, I just double-click this one, and go and say generate programming file. Double-click that, and let's see if our programming file can be generated. Meanwhile, I'll just open the adapt where we will get the file. My uh, FPGA board is already connected. Uh, I'll say go adapt, open the adapt. You see it's telling me that basis two is already connected. Waiting for the uh, process completed successfully. So generated programming file. So now I'll go to browse and I'll go to my project. What was the name of the project? Main three input and. This is the file generated right now. I'll click, double click that, say yes. Again, program, say yes. And it is generated. And let me quickly check the output. You guys can always check on your system. I'm turning switch one on, switch two on, switch three on. And the moment I turn all of them on, nothing is happening. Must be something, something wrong. I don't know. Okay. Did I do something wrong in the uh, in the constraint file? Uh, P11, L3, K3, A, B, C, Y. Mm, sorry. Uh, okay, so I have A, B, C, Y. Anyways, it it will have to work. So all, all of these four will be ended, and the FPGA board should have should it should work. So what has happened? I don't know. I could just quickly remove the board. Quickly remove the board and then again adapt. And I'll connect the board. No device is connected. No, basis two is now connected. I'll go browse. I'll say main three input, say yes. And then program, say yes. Okay. No, again, still not working. I don't know what's wrong, but anyways, it should, it should, in the end, it should be working. Uh, I'll post another video just in case if I find out what was the problem, but usually, actually, uh, usually there won't be any problem. All I can do is generate rerun all. Uh, I can quickly rerun all the programs. Hmm. Where is the constraint file again? Net A, B, Location is equal to this, this, and location is equal to this. See, there's nothing wrong in it. Control S. Oh, sorry, it was still running. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Translating map, place and route. 
everything is working generate a programming file please okay generate a programming file for us using the constraint file okay it's done I'll go to Agilent again browse and this one yes program yes yes it's working now I don't know what happened but now it's working and uh, I cannot show you but my system is okay I think I just uh, what I did I gave us tab space over here which did the magic that's the only thing I've done all right everyone I hope this will be helpful thank you very much